my teacher knows who I am, and so we, I, mean, I, I do funny stuff all the time. So I mean, I'll go on the video and do this, and I look in the camera, <laughs> so she knows it's me. Uh, so your warm ups on the board. We're gonna take five minutes, answer those two questions. It may yeah, don't yeah, just ignore the camera. Um, so I want you to evaluate these two. This is not dealing with the fundamental theorem of calculus in some sense because there's something missing here. So, so go ahead and take a, a few seconds. I'll just quick do attendance and uh, we'll go from there. Now Stephanie is doing valograms, I'm assuming. Yeah. Oh yes, yeah, she yeah, she's singing. Is. She's singing. Oh man. You're about to get too. Do you know if Isabel's doing that or is she out today? No, she's out. She's out. <laughs> <laughs> Does it have to do with the, the, the fundamental theory? What do you guys think? Does it have to do with that? With that? Yes. Well, yes. let me ask you a question. What are these two antiderivatives, these integrals missing? Um, oh, the little values. That the, are the, the little, the, the, so the upper and lower limits. Yeah. That's what they're missing. So what are the limits? In this case, so. What we call, when you have the numbers, do you know what type of integral that's called? What do we call it? Definite. definite. So these would be indefinite. indefinite integrals. There is a relationship here. The idea here is we can find the function that would allow us to find the area on an interval. Just like when we did derivatives and I didn't give you a point, that was the general derivative to find the equation of a tangent line. So we're not solving, we're not going to get an exact area. So you're not, a numerical answer. answer. You're not going to get a numerical answer. That's correct. Okay, Oh, yeah, the antiderivative. This homework. Um, we'll talk about it. Okay. When, when it when it has if we were doing that and it was like mm -hmm. um, seven x minus five times two x minus three, mm -hmm. you can't just take the antiderivative of each part. No. There's right. Because, right. Because, because there's a chain. I'm so I forgot those. Rules. Do you guys remember? Do you remember that first? This first one you're going to need a rule. So. What do we know that, let's think about it, what derivative gives me, what function will give me a derivative of a sine? Cosine. Well, not just cos. Negative. Negative cosine. So remember that if I took the derivative, and let's look at it this way. Let's just ignore this fact. You said negative cosine, right? So if I take the derivative of this function, so, uh, I'm sorry, uh, cosine, negative cosine of 7x, minus 5, what would that derivative be? Sine of like Sine of what? 3.5x squared minus 5x. 3.5x, no, no, you're not integrating. So, so 7x squared No, that's, don't 7x take the 7x minus 5 times. 7x minus 5 times. times 3.5x three, squared. Well, no, not 3.5, what's the derivative of the instant chain rule? So, derivative of the outside times. Oh. Times seven. Times seven. But does this what? does this have a seven in here? Does this have a seven in here? Because you're saying this is the derivative. Is there a seven on the outside? This is yeah. Remember, integrate. You're integrating the derivative. What you're saying? What function will give me this derivative? Is there a seven being multiplied on the outside? No. There is here. So how do you get rid of that seven? Over seven. Okay. So, in this case, what would your what would your response be? What's the what's the function that will give you a derivative of sine? Negative cosine of the inside, seven x minus five. However, what do you have to multiply this by? The derivative of the inside. No, not the derivative. What? Remember, we took. You're saying this is the answer. We took the derivative of this. Oh, I'm sorry, we took, here's what we're saying as our answer, and here's our derivative. When we take the derivative of our answer, we should get this right here, okay? But what do I have to multiply by? I've got to get rid of that 7. 1, 7. One seven. So this is negative 1, 7. Remember that formula. When you have the integral of sine of ax plus b, that's equal to negative 1 over a cosine of the inside. That was a formula that you had from a little bit ago with plus c there. It was a formula that you used. So if you didn't know the formula, that would be tough. Okay? 
Go ahead and do the second one. So the reason you divide by seven is to get rid of this, the coefficient of seven? Perfect, yeah. But, but would that get rid of the seven on the bottom, though? That's what we want. The seven on the outside will simplify with the seven in the denominator. Right? So right, so wouldn't it neither of them be there? Right. So, so why is the would, denominator still But there? then you would be right here. Because we haven't taken the derivative of this yet. Okay. If we take this derivative, uh, you would have uh, sine of the inside times 7, right. but then we divide by 7, which would give us this. They're going to cancel out. I should have known because she almost read one of the I need to get you some parchment and quill. You'd love it. How did you know to go to negative 7 co x minus cosine of 7 x minus 5? Because it's sine and cosine. Say that again? So the only difference really is sine and cosine. And then the numbers work themselves out when you get the derivative. Well, yes, yeah. Are we going to use the same rule for number 2? No, because think about what. If I took the derivative of what function would give me secant squared? I know it's going to be a different function, but I mean, is it still going to be negative 1 over? No, 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 but that's a special rule. Now you have to ask yourself, if I took, if I had some function and I took its derivative, I get secant squared x. So the answer would be tangent x plus one over C. No, it's not one over. This is a special rule. This is a identity. It's not an identity, it's a rule. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, a um, integration rule. Specific. Yeah. So it's just going to be tangent x. Tangent oh, x plus C. We're doing definite integration. We don't need to see. No, no. They do. If you took that derivative, right? So then we're just left with cosine x plus. What's that? Well, so you, you want to get rid of that 7. If we took the derivative, you would have sine of 7x minus 5 times the derivative of the inside, which would be 7. Still, all over 7, and then they would simplify and just be able to do it. So we have to find the derivative again after No, no. So that's to check your answer. So if you're saying, well, how do I know I'm correct? Okay, so if I, if I go through here, Hi, this is Kami Dusubu with your morning announcement. Children with sun benders will be in the common area for African Blowout Week next Tuesday. All members of the African Culture Club, please see Mr. Cunningham at this time. If I have Public Schools will be hosting a GSA conference here at School Without Walls on Saturday, March 1st. The Leading with Pride conference is free to all and is designed to develop future lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and allied leaders. Please see Mr. Butler today after school if you're interested in attending. Well, if I take this derivative, it's the same as if I have negative 1 7. Okay, times the derivative of negative cosine inside of that. Times the inside. Times 7. 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 Times this sign, is now sorry, more relevant than that's ever for so NSA, increasing legislation on intellectual privacy and the temporary end and of sex neutrality. Sunderland and Warren are here for the experts of the ACC. There will be practice for all members of the Poetry Club who are participating in the Black History Program today after you Are you an athlete? You guys realize, like, she'll know, like, if you're just acting for the camera, like, you're on your fake foot. It's not a fake foot. All right. Uh, secondly, if we take the integral of secant squared, what do we get? Yeah, tangent. And don't forget that that plus c there at the end, and that's all you need. So some of you are going to confuse. Oh, it needs to be one over. I, I try to give you these as review because some there's special properties like when you have a sine or cosine, and it's like it's really composite. It's one function and another. There's some rules that you can apply. Just like if you had a power rule or quotient rule, it's a, it's an integral rule that you can use to get your original function. Can you give us like a printout or something with the rules? 
there's, um, I can make, I can send you a, a few links. There's about 120, you're not expected to know that many. There's about 20, I'll make a copy. There's about 20 that are pretty. I mean, do we need to memorize it? No, I don't have them memorized. I'm not expecting you to memorize well, it. Like for that, if that comes up on a quiz, like, are we going to have to know that? Yeah, you should know that. Yeah. Oh, so we do it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, all of them. I'm talking. I know, but the, we the need 20, to have, There's like so 20 that I expect 20. you to know. If I give you a, a, a set of, and I'm thinking, if you had the 120 that comes in most textbooks, no, you're not supposed to memorize all those. These, yes, the sine and cosine. You know, substitution method, you should know. Power rule, you should know. Can, can you give us like a, like a listing of those? I rules? could. You could look it up. But yes, I can. Cool. You just type in. You, go, you guys can find anything. Go to Google. Integral table definitions. You'll find them. It'll take three seconds. All right. So here is what we'll do. <laughs> the answer, the integral of secant squared x dx is tangent of x. So the only reason we have to use the integral for negative 1 over a is because it was. Because, well, it, it, there's. You guys, you're getting uh, caught up in some of these the, the rules, okay? You know, the idea here is to make sure you look and say, here's the integral. There's the antiderivative. What function gives me this derivative, okay? This is a special property. Here, you want to look and say, all right, what function gives me a derivative? If I take its derivative, I get secant squared. It's tangent. So a lot of them, yeah, they're inverses of one another, but there are exceptions, okay? You know, tangent, if I give you the integral of tangent, now that's a specific one, that's a lot more challenging. You know, if we give you a uh, derivative of, you know, the integral of, of cosine of x dx, what function gives you a derivative of cosine of x? Sine. sine. So the integral of, of cosine of x is sine of x, because if you take the derivative of your answer, you get the antiderivative there. Okay? Um, what we're going to do today, I, I passed out a sheet of paper, it's called uh, area under curve using maple 17. We have discussed this. You have seen pictures of this. But like I said, this idea today is um, can you get through maple together on your own? We don't have maple on uh, a lot of computers. I'm actually going to hopefully send you guys a little GoFund thing for charity if you want to donate to to getting maple over the building. We got two percent. It's like fifty bucks so far. So. That's what I want to do. We're on a roll. I'm so, a job. <laughs> um, we need twenty-four hundred dollars, and then the kids can download it free. You need to um, hit up the HSA, man. I did, but they haven't responded. Anyway, so <laughs> there's cool. there's going to be two computers. I'll put one back here. If you three want to slide up here, what the goal is today is for this this lab is that you're going to be able to use Maple to find areas under a curve. You have seen this now up in the box here. This is the big command that you need to use. Okay, approximate it. Okay, and I've given you an example of how to code that. Okay. Is this the LRM, like, right? Like right. LRS We've talked about this. I'm asking you to go through this lab and get through it. And if there's questions that you don't understand, that's going to be very helpful for me in the future. But we, you as a group, are going to work through this, and you're going to take in. A, you're going to find areas under the curve using rectangles, trapezoids, and Simpsons. There's just a few things that you have to, to include if you like see the note. Okay, the approximate in, in command is under the student calculus package. To load this, you would select tools, load package, and student calculus. I will show you that. Okay, we see the partition, the partition interval, um, and then there's a, a, an approximation using Simpson's rule we've talked about. But you are going to follow along the activity um, and take the area under a curve of one specific function using a variety of methods, including upper, lower, trapezoid, and Simpsons. And you're going to compare which is best in their space to answer the questions. And then at the end, there's uh, several questions where you're going to use Maple and type in those commands, finding the LRS, RRS, MRS with two different intervals, and you'll have to code that in. I've given you the code that you need, okay, and it's written on top here, okay? So that's what we're going to do. So ladies, if you can break out and come up here to the front, okay? We are going to go for about 20 minutes on this. By the end of this activity, you should know which method is the best to use for area under curve and why. Oh, you, oh, you do that, but that would be the idea if you hadn't seen this before. So ladies, slide up here. Uh, gentlemen and lady, I will... Uh, Good. Does this work? No, I don't have maple on that. That's why we're hoping... It's, 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 it's a big thing... If, you, if we can get this, okay, and I apologize, I wish we had more computers, 
but this is what we have. So, I have a yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. No, because you know that's no. I don't have a, a disc. You get a license. It's a license per computer. If I get the unlimited, it's a yeah. special license. I can With go. The internet and stuff. They're right. Like they're, they're, they crack down. Yeah. So here's what I'll show you. Do. First step. Yeah, oh, definitely. It's just in the back, guys. First step. You're going to go up to tools. Okay. And we are going to load. So you're going to go to tools. Load package. It may take a second. And you're going to scroll down to. Student Calculus 1. You need this, okay, in order to do that. Every time, up here, look up here again one more time. Did you get it? Yeah. Okay. Every time you type a new line of code, you see that red bar? I always hit the text. So you only have to type the code once, and then just copy and paste every time you need it. So, and I'll be around to help you with that. You're going to follow along the activity and produce these graphs yourself, okay? If you have questions, please ask me. I'm going to be around with the camera. I don't care. It's like, why well, do I understand that? That's just going to benefit me. So don't be afraid to ask questions. Who cares about the camera? Ask the questions that you normally would do, and I'll answer them. Is that understood? Is this the code right here? Yeah. That's the code. The code is above in that box to the right. That's the code you're going to type first. It is case sensitive, and don't be afraid. You're going to mess up the code. I will help you. That's fine. Okay? So let's go ahead and get started. No, you have to put that. No. No, you got to go below that, buddy. Keep on hitting undo. 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 How do you get rid of the other map? How can you get rid of the map? Look, he downloaded Peter. It doesn't need to get rid of that. You didn't. Okay, no, he. Can, that's fine. No, it's not going to bother anything. Really? Okay. So. Just type in this. You, well, you got to follow along. You got to read. That's just an example. That may not be the function okay, that you so need. So when it says x equals 2 dot dot 4, is that the interval? That's two the interval. Four. Right. That's the interval. Partition is n. The, the, yes. And that tells you that. Yep. Okay. What are we? Oh, f of x equals x squared. On the interval 2 to 4. Okay. So it's approximately. Make sure everybody's typing at least one of the examples, okay, so you guys can see. Oh, wait. We're doing this one, right? That's just the example. Hold on one Isn't second. This the example? That's the example. You're correct. But this so is the code, right? Right. That's just the general code. So what? What is your function? What's number one say? What are you looking to plug in? Look at the activity number Calculate one. The lower right. But what, for the following activity, what function is it? Oh, x squared. So you're not going to type in f of x. You got to type in x squared. And what's your oh, partition? What's your a to b? Uh, two four. Right. Okay. So uh, just erase okay. that back a little bit. What am I typing? So x squared. We're supposed to do this one, right? Like yes, so right. That is, the, that is the function you're going to use for all these so you can compare and contrast. Mr. Ben, what's the partition? Six, What's the partition? Six. Six equals, so yes, very good. Six partitions. So there's a couple things. Yeah, you're not used to the program, and then you've got to also be reading and paying attention because it'll tell you what to do. Are there six partitions for this example? Yes, six partitions. How do you, uh, do you use yeah. six equals seven? Is this the, um, is What's the method? What's the method? So, the, LRS. so yeah, so LRS is equal to lower. RRS is equal to upper. So yes, so you, you type in lower. No, don't type. Yeah, if you type LRS, it's going to say what? You just use lower. Oh. Sorry, I should have told What's you. Upper? But it's lowercase. Everything's upper is RRS. Okay, comma output. All right. Equals. And then. Plot. Plot. Make sure you need a parentheses. Oh, you need parentheses. Yep, parentheses. And, oh, get rid of that F at the beginning. Okay, and one more parentheses get rid of, that's fine. And then at the end you need a semicolon, else it will not. Um, don't you hate when it does that? Yeah, you want this on your video. Yeah, Check it out. Did you guys? Look at this breakthrough yeah. again. Integral technology. The integral technology. So let me ask you a question. Yes, sir. It's gonna, well, it's going to ask you, would you say that's a pretty good representation of the area? Yes. Yes. Why? Pretty good. Because pretty, it yeah. misses I mean, only a few of the... 
density parts. Do you get all of the area there? No, no. it looks like no. it's continuing. So well, no, it stops on, on the interval. Um, all right, good. You didn't get all of it. Oh, that's all right though. So let's look at the you air. The so go ahead, and there's some questions that you guys have to answer. So LRS gives you. That's perfect. I'm glad you had an air there. So go ahead and erase that parenthesis right there. Okay, now hit enter, and it should work. Beautiful. Well, that's much easier to see than on their computer. Now, so go ahead and flip the page, and it's going to ask you several questions about that. I guess I should have had that code on the front page. All right. So, which part of the rectangle is hitting the hitting the line, the curve? The left, that's why they call you know, left R, okay. Now, is this a good representation of the area? No. Why would you say no? It's, it's okay. It's okay. Is it the exact area? No. Why? Because it's not the exact area. Because the rectangles are too big and there's too much white space. Too much white space, right. Okay, good. Misses. Yeah, when it goes right through the middle of the rectangle, it's misses. You're scaring the camera. <laughs> Just. He broke it. Nice. All right, so what happened there? What did you do to that same problem? What happened to the area? It increased. Okay, and are you, which method are you still using? Yep, left ream and sum. So what, ha so what is that telling you? What did you add more of? More subintervals, more rectangles. That's yeah. So that's the relationship. So what happens when you add more rectangles? You get a more accurate area. More accurate area. Okay. So give me an insane amount of rectangles. What would what do you think would give this like perfect, the best area you could approximate? Like hundred. Okay. Imagine if I made you draw that for a test. Um, no, no. Approximate this using a. Oh, perfect. So now you're about eighteen point five. Good. All right, so what do you guys notice about the rectangles? Uh, what do you mean? No. Which, so which method do you think is best? It looks like you guys are pretty far. We think Both left oh, and you right. keep deleting that. Don't delete them, but whatever. I know. We think left and right are the, like, the same degree of wrong, but like one is the minimum. Oh, you mean the like maximum. the percent air, the So air? if you average okay. it out, we think we would oh, get that's the neat. right one. Mm -hmm. there's, a, um, there's a method that we don't teach in AP anymore, but they have, um, what's the name of it? There's a way we can calculate errors and things like that for... I'll have to look it up. It's for a particular, but we don't teach it anymore. It's like an error analysis. Right, because you get this this many triangles more. Yeah, it looks like they're congruent, the right? You, yeah, exactly. They look yeah. like they're congruent. I would, you know, that's a great observation. The decimals are the same. They're they're Point both the right. They're yeah, both exactly. It's, to the it's like same they're both wrong, wrong to the same. Yeah, yeah the yeah. degree of wrong. Okay, I, that, I like that. That's an interesting way to look at it. Looking at the amount of leftover. So that's what why gives you so supportive of us? Oh yeah, nice. <laughs> Hit record. Yeah. Well, as soon as this is unrecorded, <laughs> you we don't want professor to see what we're doing. <laughs> what a dumb comment. Well, you guys aren't making any dumb comments. Well, I better put myself on. I better put myself on camera so the professor knows it's me. You should just selfie the whole lesson. Yeah, just have a camera on me, like walking like this. This is this is Mr. Bennett. Or you could get calculus. The yeah, my head, right? That would have worked for this because I had nobody to help me record. So I had look ridiculous though if my teacher had to go for <laughs> Don't. You know, it's on video. Hey. Better say good things about me. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, which number are you guys on? Um, do you think RS gives a more accurate area compared to LRS? R, R Would you think they're so? Which one's better? <laughs> Okay, so look at the uh, so look at the triangles here. Look at the overlap, right? We're looking here, 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 and, and then scroll back up because you, you didn't you didn't replace it, did you? Hopefully not. Okay, so try to remember this. Go back to lower. So I want you to each line. Up. Okay, so and just type lower. So try to remember those rectangles or those not rectangles. I'm sorry, triangles. Don't you feel like they're the same? 
they look pretty congruent. So do you think one is necessarily better than the other? No. Okay, that's what you want to think about. And in, in the grand scheme of things, is either one of them more accurate? Are they either one a real accurate measure of area? Okay, so you gave us 18 no. Unless we use what? The middle one. Well, the middle, or we, we do what to the left and right? What do we have to do? You said it earlier. Change the subintervals, right? Add more rectangles. Good. Okay. So down here, see where it, you see where you're looking here. Why don't you hit text? Because that's going to give you a new line of code. Okay. Now go back up, and you can copy your code, and then change what you need to for the next line because it's the same function you're using. Is that what this is? The average is. You have to. You have the to average have to is this equal to. Did you type in that line of code I gave you? Or. How did you get 18 point? Well, yeah. Oh, was it asking? We just changed you it to midpoint. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were at the point where you had to uh, type in the expression. I think you're the next line down. Yeah. The averages. To average it. Yeah. Yeah, this is accurate. Which one's the most accurate? Uh, the midpoint. Of the two, right. It's, it, well, yeah, it'll be faster than maybe. So recording again, we're back. Is this like some Canadian thing now? Like, yeah, yeah, maple. You have to change maple. the call, that's why. Uh, oh, no, oh, you just no. you change oh. method to trapezoid, right? Mm -hmm, yeah. Everything's the same. Well, that's what's great about it. It's just a, you just, it's really numerical the integration. The no, you no. So you got midpoint. So, what do you mean? Norway's plot. Well, which part? From the width of the code or? Oh, yeah. uh, well, like so. Everybody in this country participates. Well, it's uh, UK. Uh, UK. Yeah. It's How many not calculus what you calculate it's like, unless you're an engineer. Uh, like, you're not going to do that. Like, in, in calculus. What, what do we need this for? In engineering? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's all calculus based, so, I mean, you take calc courses, you know, you know, you're not going to find the area under curve. I mean, optimization is probably the coolest thing. Oh, you it's not, not colon. But you should just yeah. copy the code. Well, that's a little bit of respect for well, you. Well, you could do it that way. Just get it. Because that's like a big personality. Yeah, it's a really good It was made in the 90s. Feel the rhythm. 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 Feel the
has to talk math over there. It's good she's getting a good yeah, I know. idea she of what's your senior she, she, she knows what we really do. Uh, <laughs> I didn't count this. Talk about cool runnings. Talk about cool runnings. You're doing uh, division three. Yep, and it'll, it'll go give you a fraction. So it's, it, the syntax is cast, so it's a lot like your TI-84. I'm sure the bobsled teams use this stuff. Uh, I think they're valid rings. Well, so you get to miss my whole class so you can sing Valogram, it seems. Hold his hair. <laughs> Very cute. All right. So, ladies, and ladies, if you want to slide back to your seat really quick, um, so we're going. It's Carol. Oh, you forgot a parenthesis there. Three R's and four L's. Why? I don't understand how you're going to change my name. Because it makes it easier to know when I walk in and I sign my name. Okay. So. Just type into the lobby. Yeah, get some chairs. Even then, it will pull up. All right, so Lonnie. So overall, you guys. Jeez. Overall, you should have seen what method is the best. The Miss one. Simpsons. Simpsons. Simpsons rules the best. Now, how do you know? How do you know between that one and trapezoid? I mean, other than the numbers are different, how do you know that Simpsons is? If you zoom in. You would have to, that's a good question. So you'd have to have some type of technology to be able to zoom in and, and draw so this. You just have to know that something's right. Like, I mean, it's, you know, uh, as time goes on, as technology is allowed, as this is allowed, it's easier to see which one's more accurate. And they're very close, so there's not much, there's not much difference. Um, and when we get into talking about the fundamental theorem of calculus part one today, that's how you find these areas exactly. So how do you make, so the, the, what are the worst ways to, not the worst ways, the most, Ineffective ways to calculate area. LRS. LRS. Yeah. So the rectangles. Yeah. Okay. So what made those rectangles have better area, or those curves have better area under the overall? What What could you do? Average. Average. Also increase the subintervals. Okay. So average amount. Add more subintervals. So why do you think they came up with midpoint? Because it averages so average out. Average. Kind of level, so. All right. But, okay. So but when you took the the average of the LRS and RRS, did That's you get to. what the midpoint equals? No, not quite. You, no, not quite. Is it possible to have, when you take the average of the LRS and the RRS to get the yeah. midpoint? It depends it on could. the curvature of the line. It, depends, it all depends on the curve. But you notice that the LRS and the average of the LRS Actually. and the, the RRS, what did that equal? What, what value? Can you repeat that? Oh, the trapezoid? It equal the trapezoid. Now, ladies, you, you had one syntax error there um, with the, the, the parentheses and the, the semicolon. But the average of the LRS and RRS, that is actually going to be equal to the trapezoid. That is a, that is a thing that we know. And so um, that's you know, hopefully one thing you got out of this. Um, we, we've done it by hand, too. Um, is there really any benefit from using rectangles versus Simpson's rule or trapezoid rule? Is there one that's harder than the other to calculate? Uh, Simpsons, right, is the 4 2. I mean, that's the pattern of the 4 2, but really, is there a lot more work? No. No, so the, the benefit, you could say, well, rectangles, what did you say earlier, Zawada? What did you say? What was the benefit of using rectangles? Um, I said it's just more simple and it's easier to draw, like inside the line. Easier to draw with the curve, it's just a rectangle, yeah. right? Okay, <laughs> you can get an area, is it necessarily accurate? No, no you would have to add more. Subintervals, more rectangles, right? That's how you get an accurate area. Because so it's quick and easy, but trapezoid is pretty easy, isn't it? So that kind of excuse it well. It's like, well, it's a quick and easy. It may be a little harder to draw trapezoid if I made it do it by hand. But the calculation on pencil and paper that you've done was the same. I mean, it was nice here that all you had to do is change one number. And we used one specific function to show that which is the best way. I didn't want to give you 20 different functions because it's like, well, Let's look at one function and see which method is best. And you guys said Simpsons. Okay. Um, was the some of you was the activity easy to follow? Yeah. Yeah, it was really. Um, it was some you, parts. You, you missed some of it. Yeah. 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 
Yeah, I don't know what happened there. I'm sorry about that. They kept getting code and they just hit enter and it just erased. I have no idea what that was about. So, um, so that's area under curve. We should see that trapezoid and uh, Simpson's rule are the best. And that the trapezoid, if you need to write that down, the average of the LRS and RRS is what the trapezoid area is going to be. If you average those two out, yes. So do the people do people ever use the LRS and RRS? Well, I mean, for, no, I look at it this way. It's when we started with derivatives, we started with the rule, right? Derivative of a point that at limit of the difference quotient, now it's tedious. And then we're like, well, here's all these cool properties, right? And we started taking, and we knew that the derivative of x squared was 2x, the derivative of sine was cosine. And what that said is like, hey, anywhere on that curve, if it's continuous, you can use 2x to find the slope at any point, if you know it. Then we went into saying, here's the point, tell me the exact slope. Same thing with integration. We're starting with integrals, indefinite integrals, and just taking some, finding the original function. And what that means is that, in general, over any interval, we can find the area under that curve. So if we're integrating cosine of x, it's sine of x. So when we have sine of x plus c, we're saying, hey, in general, if I pick the interval, I can use this and find the area under the curve. Okay, we just have to be really careful, and we'll talk today about it, that it's not just under the curve between the curve and the x-axis, we also have to really talk about below the axis um, when we get into that. We'll talk about that today. Um, so the idea, I think, is people started with the left and right, and we're like, that's okay. Then they said, well, what happens if we did midpoint? What happens if we average them? What happens if we use different figures because the areas weren't that accurate? And then we have this discovery of uh, the fundamental theorem of calculus by Newton and Leibniz. Okay. So I hope you like that. That's what I'm trying to get. I do like Maple. I think it's easy to help you learn things. It was pretty easy to type things versus what happens if I made you do all these areas oh, by yeah, hand. Takes a long and then answer the question. Very tedious. So the concept I wanted you to get out of this is what method was best. Okay, it's Simpsons. And all you did is have to copy a line of code and switch a number, right? Switch a method. And so you got the concept versus not having to do all the algebra and the computation, which would have taken away from the activity, because you'd still be, you'd still be doing this. You'd probably still be on midpoint. Okay. I will say though, that you don't learn in the right way. 